Hello AP Physics students, it's Mr. Kennedy again. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, today we are going to talk about the LR circuit and the LC circuit. Uh, we're going to use inductance within uh, some circuits and we'll see how it actually plays out. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. This first circuit, which we call the LR circuit, although some people will call it the RL circuit, it doesn't really matter. Um, what it has, the L is the inductance coil because L is a measure of self-inductance and R is a resistor. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a battery or some kind of power supply and then we will have a resistor. Then we'll have an inductance coil, that little uh, curly Q thing looks like the, that's the inductance coil. And then down here, We'll have a switch here, and then right here, we'll have another switch. Um, we'll call this V0, we'll call this the resistor R, we'll call this the inductance coil L. So when we first look at this, uh, we have to remember what inductance coils do. And inductance coils are going to resist change. So when we first try to turn this on, uh, we first close this bottom switch. We can close this bottom switch here. Close the bottom switch. Now we've got a complete circuit through here. Don't worry about this part yet. We've got a complete circuit here. When we first close this switch, nothing is going to flow. And the reason is that the inductance coil is going to resist change. Current would try to go this way to push through it, but this resistance, this just change in current, actually causes a backwards current through here and that stops the flow of the current. So when you first have it, nothing happens. Just for an instant, nothing happens. But then after a while, the change becomes less and less and less, and then after a while, this just behaves like a wire. So if you remember back to the RC circuit, resistor capacitor, this is in a sense the opposite of that. In some ways, it's the opposite, because when we first did an RC circuit, the capacitor behaved like a wire, and then after a while, it blocked all the current. But then in this, initially it blocks the current, but then after a while it, it lets uh, the current go through. So the current is going to behave something like this. Uh, the current as a function of time is going to have no current in the beginning, and then it's going to go up to some uh, just normal value. Now what is that normal value? Well, since this behaves like a wire, after a while this is just going to be V0 over R. It's just going to behave with Ohm's law because this won't even really be part of a major consideration for the circuit. Which means that when we first start this, when we first turn this on, the voltage on the inductance coil will be negative V0, and then will eventually die down because that change doesn't really happen. So when we first turn this circuit on, this is V0, this becomes negative V0 because of the induction effect and no current flows because you got V0 this way, negative V0 that way, and that's it. So notice that this is very similar to terminal velocity here. Uh, and in fact, you're gonna see the equation looks a lot like that in the, uh, as we get through. So, quick review of, of the first uh, part of this. When you first turn this on, nothing happens. This resist changes. But then after a while, it just behaves like a wire. Then, if we were to take this circuit out, or open up this, uh, this circuit, so now there's no current flowing here, and then we reattach it by doing um, this part of the circuit being closed, so now that this battery is not part of the, uh, the circuit, now what happens is a little bit different. Now, the energy that is stored in here uh, and we saw last time the energy stored in there is one half Li squared. The energy that's stored in the magnetic field in the inductance coil, that's what actually runs the circuit then. Because this energy now needs to go through and, and dissipate it. So what happens is because there's a change, because I went from no or uh, I went from current flowing in there to no current, now this keeps pumping current back out. So what happens is the current that flows in the circuit starts out at V0 over R and then dies down in that exponential decay. 
the voltage that happens that comes out of the inductance coil starts out as V0 because that's what it was originally having and then dies down again. So this part does look like an RC circuit. This part actually does seem like an RC circuit that it runs the circuit after you're done. Uh, where before, in the RC circuit, the capacitor would run it based on the energy stored in the electric field. Now it's the energy stored in the magnetic field that actually runs it. But how can we get to find out what this, um, what this whole uh, pattern is as a function of time? And I'm going to do the basic part of it to get you started, and the other part will be exercises for you. But how does this behave as a function of time? Well, it behaves very similar to the, the RC circuit. But let's actually take a look at how we can pull this together and, and see what happens. If we look at the first part, let's go back to the first part. If we turn this circuit on, we're going to close this, this loop. And let's look at the uh, mathematics of this now. So we close this loop and you would expect current to flow, but because this resists the change, uh, it doesn't flow. Let's write the Kirchhoff loop for this. And this will be for this, the charging, in a sense, version. It's not really charging. It's really just uh, storing energy on the, in the magnetic field here. So we would say we have V0 from the battery minus I times R for the voltage across the resistor minus L dI dt for the voltage across the inductance coil equals zero. So this is the, um, the basic Kirchhoff loop rule that you have for this. Now, once you have this, we're gonna do a little bit of a trick here uh, to make this work, but we're trying to find out what the current is as a function of time. And we'll see what actually happens with it. So I'm gonna divide everything by, um, by R here. And I'll be left with V0 over R minus I minus L over R di dt equals zero. Okay, well the problem is I could rearrange this a little bit and have I on one side and the dt's on the other side and do all that stuff, but the problem is I've got this constant V0 over R in the way. And that's a little bit annoying. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a small change. I'm gonna let Y, it's kind of like a U substitution, um, equal V naught over R minus I. Now when I do that, and I take the derivative of that, I get dy di. Taking the derivative of that, you can see that this is a constant, so the derivative of that is zero, and then the derivative of this part is negative one, so this equals negative one which means that dy equals negative one times di. And now I can go through and make a little bit of a change back to this and make this into some kind of integral that I can actually do. So let's do that. We'll, we'll erase this part. I'll leave this side up. We'll erase that part and we'll see what happens uh, as we go through it. So coming back to this step, now this part right here is y. That's y, and then I've got minus L over R di dt, but I've got things in terms of y, so I need this in terms of y as well, and I know that dy equals negative di. So in place of di, I can put negative dy dt, that's dt, equals zero. And what I'm left with here is going to be this negative and this negative, all, it cancel each other out. But now I want to rearrange things and get them to a position where I can actually integrate this. And if I rearrange, I'll get everything with y on one side and everything with t on the other side. Rearranging, I will get dy over y is going to be equal to negative r over l times dt. So I've got the y's on one side, I've got the t's on the other side, and I'm going to integrate from y naught to y, whatever that happens to be, we'll get to that in a minute, and then from 0 to t. When I do this out, and we've done this integral many, many times, this is a natural log of, it'll end up being the natural log of y 
minus the natural log of y naught, which turns out to be the natural log of y over y naught. This is just a constant, r over l, and times dt, so this becomes, from zero to t, negative r over l times t. Because when I plug in t and plug in zero, it just boils down that way. And now, to make this actually work, I'm trying to get i by one on its by itself, so I'm trying to get uh, i as a function of time, but i is buried inside the, the y here. So I come back and I would say that to make this work, I have to bring both sides to the e power. And when I do that, I get y over y naught is going to be equal to e to the negative rt over l. And then when I'm done, I'll see that y equals y naught e to the negative rt over l. But that's not done. We don't want y. We don't even, you know, y was just some dummy variable we put in. What we know about y is y was v naught over r. So I'll plug it v naught over r minus i. So that's what y was equal to. The final y naught, the baseline y naught, was when there was no current when we when we started out. So this right here is just v naught over r, e to the negative r t over l. And when we solve this, we actually find that the current as a function of time is v naught over r, one minus e to the negative r t over l, which has that really familiar feel to it from what you would have with um, air resistance, with terminal velocity, with RC circuits, with all of those things. It really has that, that familiar feel. Now, this is, um, when we look conceptually, when time gets really, really big here, this term goes away and it just becomes a normal wire, V naught over R, it just becomes Ohm's law again. Um, and this, this pattern is again the same as RC circuits, but it even has another similarity. When time is equal to L over R, and I leave this as one of the assignments for you in, in the worksheets. When time is L over R, L over R, Henry's divided by resistance, turns out to be measured in time. So not only does um, an ohm farad, in other words, resistance times capacitance, that is a measure of time, so is inductance divided by resistance is a measure of time. It's actually measured in seconds. Again, that's one of my exercises I leave for you. But what that means in this case is if you plug in time L over R, that will be the time it takes for this to rise to 63% of its total value. And then later on when it actually decays, uh, when it's in the decay version, when it decays down to zero, you'll have I naught equals V naught over R, E to the negative RT over L as well. And then time L over R on when, it, when it decreases, that'll be the time to drop to 37%. So in this equation, when it drops down, time L over R, that's when it drops down to 37% of its value. That's one over E. Here, when it rises, right here, when it's on this part, this is where it rises to 63% of its value. Time equals L over R. That's where it gets to 63% of its value. But what's nice about this is you don't necessarily have to go ahead and, um, and use all of these equations and, and do them all from scratch. You can just really think about what's happening and use my squiggle version uh, to see what's actually going on. So if you ask yourself, what is the quantity doing? Is the quantity increasing or decreasing? Then I would say squiggle equals squiggle naught, one minus e to the negative RT over L, if it's a quantity that's increasing, like the current uh, when you first turn the circuit on. If it's squiggle equals squiggle naught, e to the negative RT over L, then this is going to be when it's decreasing. And again, in this one, time L over R gets you the time that rises to 63%. This is the time 
L over R that it would take to drop down to 37%. Um, so in some of these circuits, it's actually pretty straightforward to, to deal with what's happening in the circuit. Uh, ask yourself what it's doing right away, and it, it, should be, it should be pretty obvious if it's increasing or decreasing. So as a quick, quick example here, and we'll just make it back to our original circuit, let's just say that we have our little circuit here, and we'll do this really quickly because it's uh, some of the math is going to be really easy. Let's say that we have, let, let's just say, a 10 volt battery. This is a 5 ohm resistor. And we'll say that this uh, inductance coil is a 0 0.1 Henry inductance coil. Okay, so when I first turn the circuit on, I close this switch. What current flows? Well, the current that flows originally in there is zero. Nothing actually flows in there. How much current flows in this after a long time? Well, after a long time, now this will just behave like a wire and then it will be 10 volts divided by five ohms. So then two amps will flow in there. Then you can ask yourself, okay, well, how long did it take to rise to 63%? That would be L over R. So the time it would take to rise to 63% would be, in this case, L over R, which is 0.1 Henry's divided by 5 ohms. And we'll see we get 0.02 seconds. So that's the time it would take to rise up. Now, what was the voltage on the um, inductance coil in the beginning? When, it fir when you first turned it on, the voltage on the inductance coil would be negative 10. It resists that voltage so that no current flows. What's the voltage on it after a long time? It's a zero volt because there's no change happening. And how long did it take to drop down to that value? It took down, or how long did it take to drop into 37% of that value? It took 0 0.02 seconds. That time constant stays the same. But then what happens if we open this circuit and then close this one? And then now it is the inductance coil that's running the whole thing, that's running, it's powering the circuit. Well now, in this case, what's the current that flows originally? 10 volts, it's 10 volts because there's 10 volts on here, um, divided by five ohms, it keeps what it had. It resists that change, so we would have two amps flowing there. After a long time, there's no more energy stored in here, and the energy stored um, would totally be dissipated through heat through the resistor, so then there'd be no current flowing. How long did it take to drop down? It's L over R, it's 0 0.01 Henry's divided by uh, five ohms, uh, five ohms. So then it is going to be 0 0.02 seconds. That's how long it's going to take to drop down again. What was the voltage on the inductance coil originally? It'll be 10 volts. It's what's powering the circuit. What's the voltage on the inductance coil after a long time? It's zero volts. And it took 0 0.02 to drop down to 37% again. So it has the very much uh, a similar feel to what you saw with the uh, RC circuits. And again, how much energy was stored in here? The energy stored in this case would be one half Li squared. So at maximum, at maximum here, it would be one half 0.1 Henry's times we have two amps here. And we can see that the twos cancel, so we'd get 0.2 joules that actually um, would be stored inside that inductance coil, and that's what runs the circuit from that point. So that's LR circuits. When you first turn them on, it resists changes in the current, so nothing flows, and then after a while, the, the inductance coil just behaves like a wire. When you turn it off, the inductance coil powers the circuit, and 
then uh, after a while it'll die down because the energy will be dissipated through the, uh, the resistor. My advice to you is to think conceptually about capacitors and inductance coils in the circuit before you start doing the math stuff that goes along with it. Uh, it'll save you a whole lot of headache. But there's one or really two last circuits that was more of a variation on the circuit at the end that we want to talk about here. And this last set of circuits is based on an inductance coil and a capacitor. So we've done RC circuits, we've done LR circuits or RL circuits, and now this one is an LC circuit. And what it is, you have an inductance coil here, and then you have a capacitor, and the capacitor is charged. This capacitor is fully charged, so we'll just say that this top part is positive, and the bottom part is negative, so this is charged, and then we just say go, basically. Uh, we, we let this thing go, we can put a switch in here, or we just, here we are, we're gonna let it go. So this is our capacitor, this is our inductance coil, so that's why it's an LC circuit. Now, let's talk about conceptually what happens here. What happens conceptually is, that the current wants to flow from the capacitor. So this current wants to flow this way and discharge because the positive and negative want to discharge. Remember, remember positive is really an absence of negatives. So these charges want to flow this way and these charges want to flow this way. But the problem is that the inductance coil resists changes. So this starts to flow, but this completely resists that change. So in the beginning, nothing flows. And then after a while, it normalizes out and then current flows and then it equalizes. But the problem is once it equalizes, then the, the current that's flowing now has a decrease through the inductance coil. So the inductance coil keeps putting out the current because it induces current in the same direction and now the bottom plate here becomes positive and the top plate becomes negative. 